Hello, I'm Mike Backus and this is my semi-autonomous underwater robot. As you can see, it's made mostly of ABS pipe and pipe fittings. Um, there's a couple DC drive motors and then there's a DC dive motor here. What's holding the motors in place is just a three-quarters inch conduit clamp. The motors themselves are a dollar Chinese motors. You can see where to get them as well as the props and the bushings on my website. Um, you also see that the motors are not protected in any way. There's no epoxy or wax container that's keeping water from getting into them. And that's mostly just because I didn't want to go through the hassle and I also wanted to make changing them out real easy. They're connected by wires which are dr which go through the hole. I drilled a couple holes and then epoxied all around it so that I could um, get them to go into this capsule without leaking. Um, they're connected to a Lego brain inside here. This is just a test plug. You can get out Lowe's for about five bucks. Here's the NXT along with some rebar for ballast. Um, this is what controls everything. Before I go on, uh, there's one other thing I should mention. This bottom part here is filled with cement, and that's to keep it from uh, that's to keep it tilted correctly in this axis as well as this axis because I can also loosen this and shift it forward or backward to get it just right. Um, but getting back to how this robot's controlled, um, it's actually controlled in two ways. The NXT can be controlled by my cell phone um, using an Android app that I wrote. And so if I go to my app NXT Sub, I can actually connect to my NXT. And you can see that I can control the motors using the accelerometer on my phone. I can also control the dive motor and turn it on right here, and then I can turn it back off. The other thing that's really cool about this app is I can actually send the NXT messages. And the reason I need to do this is because, remember, this is a semi-autonomous robot. It actually cannot dive and be remote controlled at the same time. As soon as it dips below the water, um, the uh, signal, the Bluetooth radio wave cannot penetrate that um, surface, and so we lose control of the robot. So what, I, what I've done is I've created an app that allows me to initiate a program that I've written on the NXT. Once I initiate that program, it breaks the connection, runs the program, which is dive, goes down for five seconds, four for five seconds, and it actually raises for twice that long. And it, it, once it resurfaces, then I can reconnect to it. So I'm going to go ahead and initiate the dive program. What this does is it shows me several different programs that I have on here. I'm going to run my dive program. So now it's diving. And then it's driving forward. And now it's resurfacing. That's about it for how this uh, underwater robot works. I forgot to mention um, the connection between these wires and the uh, NXT here is made possible by just taking an NXT cable, snipping it, and connecting the red to the white that's inside here and then the black to the black. Uh, there's sensor wires inside this as well and you can just snip those and not worry about them. The other thing that was our biggest difficulty is this was the weak spot. This is where things broke. And so what we had to do is reinforce it with a paper clip so that it, th this part doesn't bend very easily. So uh, just to recap, you snip, solder the red to the white, black to black, uh, put a paper clip or something stiff in here, and put a lot of electrical tape around there to keep this part from bending. This will be your weak spot. Here you can see one of my students' robots making a dive. Um, you'll also notice that uh, it's got a reducer coupling with a 2-inch PVC end cap to make it flow through the water more easily. Uh, this design also afforded it the ability to pack a compass sensor in the nose so that it could actually drive straight while underwater as well. 
One of our challenges involved diving under the lane dividers at a pool. Um, this required that we initialize a program to dive under the lane divider. Once it resurfaced, we'd have to reconnect. The robot would have to be reoriented, it would have to turn around, and then it would have to dive back underneath the lane divider uh, and go back to where it came from. The most difficult challenge we came up with for ourselves was to uh, cause our robot to dive through a submerged hula hoop app, like you're going to see right here. It required orienting the robot and then writing a program that would actually dive far enough and long enough. Here's another robot making a successful dive through the hula